Hi everyone, thank you for uh, coming to this talk. Uh, hi, I hope you will find it uh, interesting and uh, maybe you learned something cool today. So as we say in crypto, LFG. <laughs> so uh, this is an article from maybe, uh, around a year ago uh, titled Ethereum fees are too damn high. So Ethereum at that, at that time was practically unusable. Uh, my minting a regular NFT costed between 60 and two, $250. And probably some of you, if you used Ethereum at that time, were frustrated with, with this experience. So, uh, but under the hood, uh, I mean, obviously engineers were aware of this and uh, a, lot of, a lot of things were done to, in order to solve this problem. So basically the, 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 the question was how to scale uh, any blockchain, in this case Ethereum. So we have, in general, we have two uh, possibilities. The first one is to scale the, the blockchain itself, uh, in, in this case Ethereum. Uh, and we can do that by a technique called sharding. If some of you were at the uh, NIR talk, uh, you heard that NIR implemented sharding from beginning. But Ethereum uh, now uh, has the, uh, the, the option to add this, and they, want to, they, they plan to do this, do this next year, or some, sometime around 2023. Uh, the second option, and this is a little bit teaser, we'll come back to this, to this topic later, is to perform the bulk of the activity off-chain. So, uh, and we call this layer two, so layer two scaling. Uh, but first, just a short introduction about myself. Uh, I'm a software engineer. I transitioned into engineering management. I have around seven years of experience in uh, Web2. And uh, after that, I found new joy, basically, uh, through challenges in Web3 space and also contributing to, to open source. Uh, I work at a company called Shard Labs, and our motto is hard coding trust in the blockchain. So. Uh, we are a blockchain R&D company. Uh, we cover the whole uh, cycle of uh, software development from, from, you know, the, from idea to marketing. So we basically cover the, the whole, uh, the whole uh, cycle. We operate worldwide, fully remote, and we are proud with our partnerships and um, projects that we did on Ethereum in partnership with the Ethereum Foundation. After that, Polygon, Lido, Near, and Starkware which uh, I'll come back to uh, later. Uh, the part of Shard Labs that I work in and is called Sh Space Shard. And what we do basically is uh, scale, to help scale Ethereum with zero knowledge magic. So um, as I mentioned Starkware, um, we, are, we are one of the core partners of Starkware. It's a, I would say a small startup from Israel. Uh, there are about 100 people, but are uh, evaluated at around eight, eight billion dollars. So uh, I guess this is like an indication of how much investors value this, this type of scaling. So a company of 100 people is evaluated, as I said, eight billion dollars. So um, their first, first uh, product that they did was StarkX around 2018. It's a standalone ZK roll-up. I'll come back to this term later. It's a ZK roll-up software as a service. So they, um, they uh, offer this solution to other uh, companies. For example, DYDX, it's a trading, uh, trading platform, and Immutable X. And until now, uh, the total number of transactions that, they, uh, that went through StarkX passed 200 million and cumulative trading passed $700 billion through, through their StarkX. Uh, after that, they, they saw that this solution uh, makes sense, and they decided to offer this solution in form of StarkNet, which is a, basically a, a new, uh, let's say, layer on top of Ethereum. It's a permissionless decentralized ZK rollup. As I said, we will come back to, to what the ZK rollup is. But now any developer can deploy a DAP using smart contracts and achieve unlimited, unlimited scale. So um, we as partners of, of, of Starkware, we 
Our work consists of building a couple of products, which are mostly tools for, for developers building on StarkNet. Uh, one of them is DevNet, which is basically Ganache. Uh, has anyone used Ganache for Ethereum? Yeah, so basically, this is DevNet is Ganache for StarkNet. A plugin for Hardhat, you probably heard about Hardhat. And Starknet, we contribute to StarkNet.js, which is basically Ethers.js for, for StarkNet. And other than that, we provide uh, consultancy, basically helping advising projects who want to move their solutions over to, to, to StarkNet and start using the, the scalability offered, offered by it. Uh, now that I introduced ourselves, uh, we can come back to the, to the main topic of the talk, which is basically like, okay, how does this, uh, how does this even work? Like, how do we perform the bulk of the activity off-chain? So we do this with a technology uh, called called rollups. So it's a it's a term used by by this by this uh, for this technology, and uh, basically the idea is to process transactions off chain. So use so take take off some transactions from Ethereum and bring them over to this new chain, process them over there, batch them, compress them. So uh, and then deliver them back to the main chain, in our case, Ethereum. So just an example, we, we basically take thousands or even ten thousands, hundreds of thousands transactions uh, to do this layer two, we call it layer two. We compress them and basically on Ethereum or, or L1, you get just one transaction. How does this make sense? How does this work? We'll, we'll shortly come to this, so don't worry. Uh, just a little bit patience. Uh, so basically, this is a synergy between L1 and L2. Uh, you may ask yourself, like, why cannot one, one, just layer one offer offer all of this? But it's it's unfortunately it's not possible. Uh, on on L1, uh, we we get we, with this approach we get both uh, best of both worlds. On L1, basically uh, we have security, data availability, and decentralization, and uh, and L1 doesn't have to worry about scaling. L2 doesn't have to worry about security or data availability. It just uh, is handling scaling. So we have separation of, of concerns in this case. Um, we have two couple of uh, two two types of uh, rollups. First, the first ones that came uh, are called so-called optimistic rollups. Um, the mechanism that that's under the hood of them is it's called fraud proofs. So you basically assume that transactions are valid that are coming from L2 to L1 until proven otherwise. So you have a period of one week where someone can dispute a certain transaction and case and can say like, okay, this transaction is fraud and roll it back. Like um, um, complexity of optimistic rollups is, is low, so you already have like working working projects like Arbitrum and Optimism who already like uh, help uh, scale Ethereum. But um, in the meantime, research continued and uh, we have a new, like, like a little bit newer uh, version of rollups, which is called Zero Knowledge. That's basically ZK that, that I mentioned in the, from the beginning of the presentation. And this works in a little bit different way. It has validity proofs which are instant. You don't, you don't need to wait like one week for, for some kinds of disputes. Uh, everything is known at that point in time. The, uh, let's say, a little drawback of this approach is uh, you, you spend more gas, as you can see from the comparison, and the complexity is a little bit higher uh, of this approach. Uh, but in the end, like as time goes on, we see that uh, zero, zero knowledge rollups are gaining more and more um, market share and traction in favor of optimistic rollups. So more, more people are starting using them over optimistic ones. So basically, they are winning the, the, the race. Uh, projects that use zero knowledge, that are based on zero knowledge uh, rollups, are StarkNet, ZK Sync, and uh, Polygon Hermes or Polygon ZKVM, uh, recently rebranded, so. Um, so, okay, so let's dive a little bit deeper into, into how, ZK, how ZK rollups work. So basically, as I said, you as a user, uh, you want to interact, basically you would interact with layer two, you would interact with uh, some kind of rollup, 
initiate a transaction, and then after this gets uh, like uh, uh, there's a little thing called proof that gets generated on 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 the rollup, which I'll come which I'll explain a little bit later how that works. But basically, after that, you have a, on on layer one on Ethereum, you have a smart chain, a smart contract on chain, which has two tasks. First, uh, first task is basically processing deposits and withdrawals, and the second task is verifying those proofs that I mentioned. So we'll we'll come back to them. But uh, basically, you want to verify that everything that happened off chain is following the the rules, uh, and only after everything is valid that you know everything is valid, the layer one blockchain is updated. Uh, in, in our case, the fact that data is on chain is key. So anyone can uh, basically locally process all the, all the operations that happen on the rollup. And this, this is also like, as I said, like the security that's provided by Ethereum, this is basically uh, the, the case of this. So you can fraud detection, initiate withdrawals, etc. Uh, so yeah, blockchain will always reflect a correct L2 state. Uh, but again, like this is all high level. Like I, I don't think like you can feel like how, how this works. How, how would this work in the real world? Well, like what's the story behind zero knowledge proof? So uh, how, can we, yeah, how can we basically know and guarantee, be guaranteed that the off-chain activity is correct, that nobody tempered those transactions that are happening somewhere outside of Ethereum? Uh, a short definition would be that ZK proofs or zero, no zero knowledge proofs can prove that something is true without having to reveal what exactly they are proving. So uh, a short story would be like, imagine you have Alice and Bob, and imagine that Alice is colorblind. She cannot see colors, and she has two uh, different colored balls uh, holding in her hands, and Bob wants to prove to her which ball is blue and which ball is red. How can he? How, how can he do this? He he can like tell her, but she she obviously she doesn't want to believe him. Yeah. So basically, what she what she can do is um, take uh, like put her hands behind her back. Uh, before that, show show to Bob like okay, uh, I have like let's say blue ball is in the right hand, uh, red ball is in the left hand, and put the hands behind her back. And now she chooses. She she can choose to switch the balls or keep them as they were originally. And then show them to Bob. And he says, okay, in your right hand is the red one, in your left hand is the blue one. And she puts the arms again behind her back. Show them again. Put them back and then repeat this 10 times, 20 times, 30 times, 50 times, doesn't matter. If every, uh, the only important thing that Bob can say is if she switched the balls or, he, or she kept them in her, in her hands. And she will be convinced after 50 times that Bob says, okay, you switched the balls or you kept them uh, in the same place. She is convinced that he knows like which ball is blue and which ball is red. So I hope now that you have a, a, a little like un more understanding in the real world how zero knowledge proofs could, uh, could work or are working. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that's a, a cool story, bro, as that they would say, but how does this work on the blockchain? Well, basically, uh, a lot of fancy math. So a lot of mathematics is uh, being implemented in order for this to operate on the blockchain. Uh, it's based on polynomial uh, equations. But in our case, in the case of blockchain, that is, that's not enough. Like, uh, we need another additional step, and that step is succinctness. It's a... Uh, I love this word a lot, but basically what, what it means is that uh, proofs at the end should be very small. The proof that comes to Ethereum should be very small and it should be easy to verify. Even if the computation that generated that proof on layer 2 is very, very big. It can take a couple of hours, but Ethereum uh, should be able to verify this proof in a matter of maybe seconds. So th this is the key and this is something that's, 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 uh, that's true for zero knowledge proofs. Uh, as, I, as I said, math is the underlying, uh, cryptography and math is the underlying foundation how, how this works. You have a lot of uh, 
tutorials online if, if you're interested in, in learning more. So um, basically we have uh, two types of zero knowledge proofs, but um, the first one is SNARKs. Uh, the problem with SNARKs is uh, they, they, they came first. The problem with them is that they require initial, initial trusted setup. You can imagine like uh, sharing of uh, keys between uh, two parties, like L2 and L1 need to share uh, keys between each other and then they know, okay, like you can send, we can send messages to each other, which is a little bit less scalable uh, approach, but uh, it results in a smaller proof and it's, it's, some, uh, it's, it's cheaper. And now, but later on, uh, Starkware came to, came to the company I mentioned, they came over and said, okay, uh, like we invented a new form of SNARK, it's so basically ZK Stark, which is a, a sub, uh, subtype of SNARKs, it stands for Scalable Transparent Argument of Knowledge. Uh, so, as I said, it's, it's based on cryptography, cryptographic, cryptographic hashes and polynomials, but in case of Starks, the, um, the advantage is that they do not require initial trusted setup, as SNARKs did. So, in, as a result, they are more scalable, also quantum resistant, and, but unfortunately, a, a little bit uh, downside is that they uh, have a larger proof and need a little bit longer time to, to verify the, the proof. Uh, ZK Stark's focus for now and Starkware's focus for now is scalability. Uh, there's also an interesting possibility that's now, uh, that's now coming into play in the near future, uh, very soon, is recursive layers. In, in our case, layer, okay, we, we talked about layer one, which is Ethereum, layer two, but now it's possible to have layer three, layer four, layer five, doesn't matter. So you can like stack these layers uh, and then, and then, like deploy apps on, let's say, layer three, layer three, and they can interoperate with each other over layer two, which is much cheaper than interoperating via Ethereum as before. So this is an interesting case, and um, as they said, like Vitalik, even uh, he released a blog post a couple of days ago uh, regarding this topic, where he explained a little bit more about. Uh, uh, recursive layers and what makes sense and what doesn't make sense with this approach. So basically this is more like an application uh, scaling. So layer three would be uh, like as, uh, applications can choose what types of scaling they want and, and uh, what types they, they don't want. And privacy, for example. Um, so yeah, like we, we went a little bit high level through, through, all this, through, through all this story, so I want to wrap it up. Uh, how, how one transaction would, uh, how the flow of one transaction would look uh, from Starknet to Ethereum. So basically, when a transaction is submitted to, to Starknet, uh, it goes to a node that's called sequencer. Uh, sequencer's job is to batch all of the transactions and send uh, the list of changes uh, caused by all the transactions over to, the, to a new component called prover. And this prover's uh, task is to generate the proof. So one, one hash, just one hash, out of let's say 100,000 transactions, one hash, like a proof, will be sent to Ethereum. And then uh, it's sent to a smart contract. Uh, yeah, like it's, it's called verifier. And this verifier will quickly rerun this proof and see if everything, if everything is okay. If everything is okay, uh, Ethereum, Ethereum state gets updated and everything is, everything is fine. Uh, unfortunately, there's uh, one problem with, with this whole story. Uh, generating proofs is not uh, so trivial, uh, tri trivial task. Not, not really generating proofs, but generating them uh, efficiently. That's not so easy to achieve. That's why Starkware uh, had to invent their own language, which is uh, very uh, optimized into generating mathematical proofs. It's called Cairo. It's actually a general purpose language. You don't have to use it for just writing smart contracts. You can use it to build any application. Uh, in, in our case, it's, it's needed. We, we need to learn it in order to, to work on, with Starknet. 
to, uh, to, to write smart contracts. It's, it's, for now, it's very low level. It's uh, very similar to Assembler, if, you, if any of you like, had anything to do with Assembler. Um, but there is a new version coming. 0, uh, 1.0 is going to be very similar to Rust. So if some of you have experience with Rust, it's, it's going to be syntax is, is, will be uh, familiar. Um, one more problem is that StarkNet and Cairo are not EVM compatible. So you cannot take an ex existing smart contract written in Solidity and deploy it on StarkNet. It won't work. Uh, but there is a there is a, a solution that's also being it's also in progress, uh, being worked on, like a Solidity transpiler. It's called Warp, b uh, being built by by a company called called Nettermind. So we'll see in the future how this is gonna uh, play out. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like learning a new programming language is always a friction. Uh, it's always a problem. People are gonna be reluctant to it. So I have. I have something else to show you, which is quietly becoming more and more like uh, talked about. These are ZK EVMs, so zero knowledge EVMs. These are chains that are uh, still in uh, work in progress, but the idea is that you can port uh, Solidity smart contracts and or uh, maybe even port them one, one on one, so without any changes or do minimal changes in your dApps and port them over to, to this uh, layer two uh, and use all the benefits that come, that come from them. So we have three projects. Uh, Matter Labs company is building ZK Sync. We have the Polygon ZKVM and Scroll ZKVM. So these are all very interesting projects. They're gonna be, uh, I think, very big in the future and we'll, we'll see like how this is gonna, gonna play, uh, play out. Uh, so one one let's say slide uh, one picture uh, regarding this whole ZKM, ZK EVM story is just to show you the trade-offs between compatibility and performance uh, when we talk about ZK EVMs. So uh, here we have like if it's completely EVM uh, compatible, the problem with this approach is that uh, it is going to take a very long time to generate a proof. But once you lower the EVM compatibility, like uh, here you have points like 2, 2.5, uh, 3, uh, and 4 at the end. When you lower this compatibility, you get uh, more speed into generating, uh, generating of proof. So it's not like you, 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 you win some, you lose some in this situation. You cannot have like uh, basically everything for now. Who knows what's, uh, as I said, this is still like work in progress and research is being made in a year or two, is really, it will really be interesting to see uh, how all of this will play out. So yeah, that's, that's, basically, uh, that's basically it. Uh, I, like, as I said, uh, keep an eye, keep an eye, if you're interested in, in blockchain, in Ethereum, keep an eye on layer two solutions. Um, we, we are not sure like, who, who will win, like is it gonna be Starkware with their approach, or maybe other, like, as I said, ZKVMs, but sure, it's sure going to be interesting. That, that, that's something I know for sure. A really interesting uh, journey. Uh, that's it. Uh, thank you very much uh, for being here. So we have some time for some questions. Uh, and I... I saw the good, it's a good idea from the <laughs> from the from before to take a selfie. So don't mind me doing that also. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. Fronty. 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 How do you do that? <laughs> like this? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Wave. Okay. Uh, maybe someone, any questions or? Uh, just one question. So you mentioned layer twos, layer threes, layer fours, and layer I don't know. Like, how does that change for us developers? So what do we have to choose the layer? You know, how does that behave for us? Uh, ideally, as a user, you won't know which layer you choose. 
So that's, that's the idea. Uh, everything should happen behind the scenes, and as a user, you would just have your wallet or your DAP, and that's it. So, in ideal ideal scenario, and we are going in that direction. So, I, I'll repeat if you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you talked about NFT. For example, if I need to mint uh, 1,000 NFTs, can I use your solution, or it's not ready? Uh, you have, you have uh, basically, uh, I, if you, if you uh, th there are already working solutions. Okay, I, maybe I need to um, point out that StarkNet is still like uh, in alpha. There is a mainnet and testnet. You can use, like, uh, you can play around, you can deploy dApps and whatever. But it's still like, you know, if something goes wrong, like, yeah, you, like you, you've been warned. Like you can, you can even bridge it, it, Ethereum between the mainnet Ethereum and the mainnet on, on Starknet. But like it's, uh, you should be a little bit cautious. But you can min mint NFTs on, on Starknet, definitely. Like there are already applications that do this. But I mentioned StarkX. Uh, they did so like, um, like under the hood, let's say, en scalable, scalability engine that you as a user who used, let's say, some... Uh, I don't know if it's uh, Immutable X, whatever. Uh, you use Immutable X, but you don't know that like somewhere StarkX is the one who is like minting those NFTs a lot cheaper than it would be while, uh, while just using Ethereum. Sorry, uh, can I ask? <laughs> I want to ask um, about, so if I will mint my NFT on your network, yeah. they will be... Um, like, like I mean, the batch in our Ethereum network, or no? Sorry, I didn't quite catch. Um, for example, now I can mint NFT on Polygon or on Ethereum, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to um, ho, um, to spend less money to okay. mint on e Ethereum network, right? Because it's cost too high for 1,000 images. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can mint on your NFT network, start, start. Yes, 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 yes. And then. Yeah. It will be in batch ported to Ethereum network or no? Uh, as far as I know, not uh, in case of NFT, NFTs. Like uh, you, but you have them. Like you can, you have them in your wallet. Like uh, it's it's uh, you have like dedicated wallets for Starknet, and they work like the same as as they do in Ethereum. Ethereum is securing all of this story, but NFTs stay on 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 Starknet. You, but you can like move tokens around from one network to the other. If that if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm not sure <laughs> because I wanted to how to decrease costs of Ethereum. Yeah. And you told that it's possible to in batch at uh, your network. But those are just like transactions, like you know, like uh, okay, owner of st state change, etc. Et so you are like you can you uh, you can you you know that you are the owner of of that NFT. It, it's still written in Ethereum, you know, but. The, the, like the transaction that, that the, the minting is done on Starknet, okay? Okay, so I think it will be help us, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, I mean, cheaper and faster, definitely. So, yeah. Okay.